Yeah, just a, a quick word about me. I'm a PhD student at the Pharmaceutical Bioinformatics Department at Uppsala University. And you find some information about my boss and our lab website there as well. And yeah, you can find my slides there online as well already. So, yeah, so I hope to, I will try to be brief as well if I can, and I, I will hope to give you some overview of, of, of these extensions and the, this new tool that we developed so that you know if it's something for you and so on. So, uh, to continue just about, uh, yeah, <laughs> about this topic, RDF import, uh, I just made a little uh, poll just for fun and it seems that at least not everybody uh, answered like RDF what or not the slightest. So at least uh, some people are interested in uh, RDF import in some sense, possibly. To continue on what we are uh, interested in in our research is it's both this kind of big data, etc., and then this kind of semantic data, and hopefully we'll combine it in that. So that's kind of the background where we're coming from. Anyway, so this RDFI extension, uh, could, I show, could you sh raise your hand if you have know about this extension already? It would be nice to, yeah, have a few spread hands here and there. So I tried to, uh, make a little bit of an intro of it as well. And you can find a web address there as well. So what's the basic problem here? And uh, the problem is, we have seen already that Smantic Media Wiki has, it has nice RDF output. I think we even saw some example output recently here. But um, at least when I looked, and I haven't really seen any really stable solution there for RDF import. Yet. It will be interesting to see, to see Tony's solution there and compare our approaches. And, and what I mean here is plain RDF triples, not, not something like an ontology or something, because that's typically used for creating a structure of the wiki. But uh, when, you, when you start from R simple RDF triples, maybe you just want to have a, more of a free structure. You have any structure that is that kind of shows up from the data. So uh, the RDFI extension, uh, if we reuse the picture here a little bit, we see that now we have these both arrows. We have RDF export and RDF import. And it, this image tries to show that actually we have, a, we have a, a multiple paths from which you can import the data. You can actually, you can mirror a whole Sparkle endpoint if you want, you just set, select the URL and then click a few times because it will do it iteratively. Or you can, yeah, you can do it through Sparkle, or you can do through some web forms, etc. And yeah, I should clarify that. So the, the main thing here, I mean, is to really get this round trip of data. And it, actually, there's more to this. When you really want to round trip data, you have to think carefully because uh, you know that semantic triples, they have, they have special URIs and when you export the data, you want to have the same URIs if you want to really be to kind of uh, maybe import it and use it as a collaborative editor and then export it. And uh, there are some solutions for that. So let's uh, look quickly on how, how uh, importing a few triples could look like. So we have this uh, we have four triples here. We have Stockholm, uh, locate, is located in Sweden. Stockholm has population, yeah, this number. I hope I didn't mix them up, it's possible. Uh, Frankfurt, the same thing, it's located in Germany. And you see these long URLs, now I just used some fake URLs here just to, to make it shorter. Uh, but they typically follow some kind of agreed upon schema, so we want to keep them when we export again. So we will see this when we was yeah here in the next picture we'll see how, for example, Stockholm and Frankfurt will be created into two wiki pages, and this is also one feature of the import. Like here it's four triples, but they will be kind of merged into two wiki pages because there there's just two different subjects. So we need an aggregate of subjects that way, and here we see how the original URIs are kept. They are 
kept, actually this is wrong, it should be equivalent here right here. Need to fix that, but you get the idea. Uh, but actually when you import also all the all uh, URIs or all facts that have a URI, they will also become a page and, and have their equivalent URI. And of course even the top properties. So, uh, and this is a little bit of the problem with, with when you have a really large number of triples, you might end up with a really large number of wiki pages created. And I don't know if you have tried to automate creating wiki pages. It's not like it happens uh, really fast. It's uh, really a yeah, we're, we're, we're in process. So. <laughs> anyway, just quickly uh, some screenshots. This is the RDF import interface. You can choose Turtle or XML import. And then we have actually a Sparkle endpoint. This is a little bit because the RDF library we used also provides this. And so, and here also, like first, if you just run the default query here, you get. Yeah, a selection of all the data that is in the wiki. And I don't know, I, I think you don't see it here actually. Yeah, we can zoom. And then you might see that there is a special, kind of a special URIs in the wiki by default. There's something URI resolver or stuff. And that, uh, one of the features with RDFIO and why we hook into the Sparkle extension uh, feature here is that you can click in that output original URIs and you might, if you look carefully you might see that ah, sorry, that these URIs change so now we have actually something else, rec shop something blah 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 and so we get the URIs that were used when we imported it originally and then we can actually even use uh, uh, Query by original URIs, and, and there we have uh, one of the original URIs here. So this is really the core idea of, of RDFI, to be able to work in the original schema, so to say, even though it's imported into semantic media. Uh, and then I'll try to give a quick overview of the status of, of RDFI. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it started as a Google Summer pro project in 2010. Then I presented it. It has gone through a rewrite. I presented it again. And then Ali King, Alison King, has, together with Joel Sachs, they, they, they were very interested in, in a very uh, important functionality, which I think Jaron also mentioned that you want to be able to add facts through template calls. So, as far as I know, Ali has added it this feature and presented it. Um, and then up to today, now, yeah, we have a separate slide for that, the current status. Um, Ali is working on, on the last issues to get a little bit more up-to-date version compatibility here. Um, but while, I mean, uh, the story about RFI has been a little bit of a technical mess, I would say. It's, it has been really hard to install and so on. So, uh, but now I think we have a solution, at least for people who want to play around with it, that you can, you can have this Vagrant box, uh, which you can, with a Vagrant up command, you can, you can have it all installed. And even if there are some hacks required to get it to work, this will be done automatically through the Vagrant box. So, so you can, you don't need to think about that. Uh, then there's a new feature which uh, we developed uh, in our work to try to, uh, yeah, try to do large data sets. We're coming into this issue here a little bit. So I recently merged in, or Ali merged in my feature that you have a command line import functionality as well. Uh, because if you have really large files, you don't want this 30 second timeout in, 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 in PHP, etc. So, but it's still pretty slow. I mean, I think we tried importing, I think, was it like, Two, three hundred thousand triples, and that it takes overnight. I think it takes more than 24 hours, and it seems to be the actual media wiki import that takes the most time. So yeah, this is highlighting it. The slide is highlighting it, and this leads up to the next part of the talk, which is the RDF to SMW tool, because we were really frustrated with this. I mean, 
as I, as I say here, like if we run the import overnight and then we realize, that, okay, we made some weird configuration settings. These days that doesn't get the template or they don't get weird titles or whatever. And then we need to rerun it overnight. That's not feasible. Uh, so this is solved actually with this uh, RDF2 SMW tool, which is a standalone standalone tool. And uh, uh, this picture is supposed to picture this uh, new approach that now we take an RDF file and we run the RDF2 SMW tool. And what what it produces is a media wiki XML file. So I mean. The rest here, it's just normal XML import which you have in plain immediately. So, we, yeah, we, the, and this tool as well, it's really simple. You just download the binary and run it. So, we have now something much more robust, and you don't even need to use RDFI if you don't want. It could still provide the, the Sparkle endpoint and so on. So, and so how it solved it, solves this is that, of course, that now you can look through the MediaWiki XML file because if you browse through it, you see the wiki content. So you can kind of run a quick, a quick conversion here because this is much, much faster. It's still the actual import that, that is slow. And, and the, how it's getting fast, it's written in Go because it's, it's easy to make multi-core performance in Go and so on. It's also a very pluggable architecture if you if you dare to dive into the Go code and are, is interested to learn that. And it should be pretty easy to plug out components and so on. And that, that is the, the URL there, here if you want to download it, github.com, Samuel, two else, RDF2 SM. RDF2 SMW. Um, and this I will not dwell long upon, it's just showing this architecture, it's based on kind of flow-based programming, so you have boxes with which are processes, and then you have ports which are named, and then in this kind of syntax you can rewire this diagram of, of the processes, so you can easily switch out the box completely, just reconnecting the, the connections, or plug in another step, or produce some intermediate result, or whatever, it's, it's really pluggable. Uh, right, so to give you some performance numbers here, unfortunately I don't have the exact numbers for the media wiki import because that, that takes a long time, so I, I couldn't rerun it now <laughs> and then try to get up to date numbers. But, but this conversion tool, um, RDF2 SMW, I can at least show how it behaves with the number of triples. So we have here, it's going from 50,000 triples up to, yeah, Half a million triples, and the, in, to the left here is seconds. It should be around eight minutes up here. Five hundred seconds should be around eight minutes. So that's the top here. So we start around. I think it's for hundred thousand triples. It's like fifteen seconds or something, and then up to half a million triples, it will take actually eight minutes. Um, but I mean, it's not overnight. It's much faster. Uh, right, so yeah, I could encourage you to take a look at the RDF2 SMW here. Uh, in, in some way, it would be nice to, to have the RDF IO extension kind of viable for the future, but it needs to be, I think it needs to be easier to maintain. Maybe we need to simplify it, break out into parts, etc. Maybe the Sparkle endpoint could be a separate extension and so on. Uh, Actually, when Danny, who had the, this idea already before me, then I got the same idea and supposed, suggested it for the Google Summer of Home talk, he actually had the idea to expose uh, this kind of RDF import functionality via the MediaWiki API. So uh, I started to think about that, and that's maybe the right way to go. I'm interested in your feedback here. Uh, yes. Finally, yeah, I mentioned already about this Vagrant app, uh, this Vagrant box, and uh, this is the URL for it. I didn't, don't know if I added it before. To, to find all the RDFIO stuff, you can just go to github.com slash RDFIO and, and you will find the different repositories. 
vagrant up and then it will take like 20 minutes and you will have the big Ah, it's a bit more steps right now, but uh, it's all in the reading. Uh, right, finally, uh, I want to acknowledge a few people who have been really important in this whole project. Denny, he got the, had the idea already and he has been, yeah, he, he has been encouraging and, and mentoring the Google Summer Code project. Ali King has done a really great job on improving the code quality. Now we still, any, both Ali and me don't have much time to work on it, so the result is not still uh, maybe what we hope. Then Joel Sachs was mentoring Ali. Egon Willighagen um, has been really supportive with use cases. Ola Spiut is my, my boss, he's financed things. Of course, Google and GNOME, and I should have mentioned Wikimedia Foundation as well. I leave this slide up so you find their Twitter handles and so on. Any questions? Yeah, the, the actual the actual XML import still takes uh, roughly the same. Okay. But, but now you can preview it before to make yeah. sure that it's correct. Samuel, thank you very much for still working on this. I think that's a really great uh, extension. I, some years ago I, I used it and uh, it already provided a lot of benefits and uh, nice that you uh, continued here. So the one question would be, uh, do I understand correctly that given an arbitrary RDF file, I can uh, import this um, with this RDF to SMW, this new new extension, into an SMW, then do the usual RDF export from SMW and I get the same RDF with, of course, addi some additional triples, but still I get the, the, the same content of the RDF that I inserted before. Yeah, it's good that you ask because it needs some clarification. The default RDF export will actually not do that. It will provide the linking information between the new and the old. Uh, but if you use the Sparkle endpoint, you can do uh, there uh, an export through the Sparkle construct something. Okay, maybe we, we talk about this offline. Yeah, so I, but it gets more complicated. But so uh, take it the other way around. Um, assuming I have an arbitrary SMW with arbitrary annotations in it, and I create an RDF export from it. Yeah, and then. I re-import this RDF export into the SMW back with your extension. Would you usually, in my uh, intuit intuitively, I would say nothing should change. Yeah, uh, now it depends. It, it, it tries to, like, the, the, at least the RDF file extension, the PHP one, it will look for if the if, uh, article is tagged already with an equivalent URI and then we'll, it will link to that. Like, otherwise it could find up some other title or something, but as long as there it's tagged. I don't know how it becomes when, since default articles don't, are not tagged with this, so I don't know how that would become. Uh, it's, it might need uh, some extension there to, to make it work properly in that way. Yeah, that's right, it's a very good point. Okay, and the, your, your two extensions, um, so um, RDF.io and RDF to SMW, do they use a different semantics of how to map between RDF and SMW uh, annotations? They are very much, very much similar. The, the, the main difference between, between them is that the standalone tool, RDF to SMW, it, it can't check the database, so it cannot reuse title that has become mapped with an URI already. Uh, so that doesn't work. So it will be consistent within that import run. But if you have run another import before, it, the same URI might actually end up at 
to two different wicket ledgers based on, on what date they would have. Okay. I have two more questions, but I will give yeah. others. So what happens to all the data that is already in the wiki when you use the SMW, RDF to SMW tool in these XML files that you create? You overwrite existing files or you merge them with existing content? How does it work? Yeah, right now it creates a new revision and kind of overwrites it, yes. But it's on the, it has been on my, in my mental roadmap that it should update articles as well. Okay, and stuff like uh, like uh, language text and data types, <coughs> they get lost all with maybe the semantic media wiki 2.4, they can be added somehow. I cannot answer about the language features. I'm, I'm not up to date on that. But in general, it overrides it right now, unfortunately. But uh, I should also mention that the RDF to that SMW tool, it also, it also has this feature to write through templates. It writes the facts through templates. You mean template calls? Yeah, template calls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so no questions. Thank you.